Welcome in to the Autzen Audible's podcast. I'm Matt Prem, Eric Scopel on the show as always. And today we're bringing in Tom Loy, a good friend of ours, longtime friend who has moved into the recruiting team nationally for 24-7 Sports, but he's been with uh, the 24-7 Sports Network for as long as I can remember. Um, Tom, this is your first time on the show. Welcome. Congrats on your job promotion. How are things going? I appreciate it, man. Glad to be here. Hopefully you can uh, make this a, a regular thing uh, moving forward, man. Um, I seem to be a fan favorite over there with the Oregon fans, at least <laughs> as of lately. But no, the job's going really well. Um, started on January 1st, made that tr- transition, kind of slowly weaning off the Notre Dame beat um, as, on a day-to-day basis until we can truly find like a, a replacement. Um, but nationally, things are going re- really well. Super stoked to be working with the team that we have in place, Andrew Ivins, Brandon Huffman, and the rest of the gang, and recently hired, obviously, Anna Adams to bring a lot of juice into the Southeast. So pro- really excited about the direction of everything, and then uh, going to be moving to Nashville in May. Um, so I'll be in studio with uh, Cooper Patagna and the rest of the guys. So going to be doing a lot of a lot of video, um, a lot of a lot of things like that. we got some big things coming at 24-7 Sports. So very excited about that, that move, and uh, like we talked about before we got in here, Cold weather in Indiana in March, not a big fan of that. So looking forward to being in Nashville. <laughs> yeah, you've seen Tom's work uh, throughout the first couple of months of 2024, a lot of content on Oregon. We're going to talk to him about uh, just what he's hearing from a national perspective and some of his reporting on uh, Oregon's recruiting for the football program. And um, it's going to be a frequent thing, like Tom said. Hopefully he's on. We, we're going to make sure he's on here more often. Um, let's start with Cooper Perry. Uh, you were the first person to throw a crystal ball in, four-star receiver um, in the 2025 recruiting class, the number one player in the state of Arizona. Just what's the latest with Cooper Perry, uh, and what were you hearing to feel confident throw a crystal ball in there? Yeah, so I've known Cooper a very long time. Um, he was an early Notre Dame target, and uh, he had a ton of interest. Notre Dame kind of slowed things down with him for a variety of reasons, and um, you know, when they made a transition at receiver, uh, receivers coach to Mike Brown from Chancey Stuckey, it just didn't seem like Notre Dame was going to push either way. So, um, but throughout all of that, we've had a great relationship. I feel like I'm one of the guys probably alongside Blair Angulo who knows him better than most. Um, so I got a pretty good pulse on this one. And I feel like Oregon and from every time that I've talked to him, whether it was battle Miami, um, or the next one's event, uh, the, you know, Nike camp in, uh, Vegas around Super Bowl weekend, um, Oregon's always been the team to beat. Uh, we had a great talk then. Um, it was a very casual setting, so we really got to got to know him better, hang out with him, and what an awesome kid. Um, but I think it's really clear and obvious that Oregon's the team to beat. It's got the official visit set for, I think, June 7th. Um, and honestly, like I'd be shocked if Oregon didn't land him. I know Oklahoma had a great uh, visit with him, and Washington, Arizona, or the other, or, I'm sorry, Arizona State are the real threats to land him, but at this point, man, I'd really be shocked if, if Oregon didn't get it done. Tom, I, I was just kind of starting to do, maybe I'm, I'm obviously later than you guys on the national desk, but uh, kind of looking at 2025 and, and the rankings. And, and I was surprised, I think out West in the States, there's there's one top 50 guy in 2025. Is this seen as a weaker class up top? I, I just, can you speak broadly as to to some of that? Because there's, there's a lot of depth once you get from like maybe 51 through 150 but top 50 there's only one guy none in california which is obviously rather unusual so what, what's kind of going on out west at 25 yeah i mean honestly all of this stuff is is all about interpretation and and i could see a kid that i absolutely love and then i andrew ivins is watching at the same time and he's just like i don't i don't see it now we look at different things and sure. for me like i put so much stock into football and the actual game whereas our guys are so focused on um, that as well as the measurables and getting to the NFL and, and all that stuff. So, um, you know, how, how fast their 40 times are, how they jump, how athletic they are. And I love that because that's really what's going to separate a lot of these guys to the next level. I mean, I, these guys take a lot of flack. Andrew Ivins, Cooper Patak, you know, <laughs> yeah, sure. Biggins, Gabe Brooks, Hudson Standish, who was an absolute stud. Not enough people know about Hudson. I got to know him in, 20, in San Antonio with the All-American Bowl a lot, and he is an absolute rock star. Um, great mind when it comes to scouting and things of that nature. So, you know, I don't want to get off topic, but like our team takes a lot of flack, but I cannot tell you how hard they work and how diligent they are. Um, they have 
my complete respect and they're great at their job. So again, going back to the rankings, um, you know, one may see this in California in particular as a strong group while others may see it as a weak group. I kind of think it's a maybe in between, maybe a little bit of a weaker group this year than, than other cycles. Uh, no doubt about that. I mean, I'm a big fan of like Hassan Longstreet, the quarterback out West. I think he's got day one potential down the road. Absolutely love that kid. Great arm. Uh, saw him at Battle Miami. Really impressed. You got Madden Faremo, linebacker. Really, really talented prospect. Uh, Matai Togi, uh, defensive back, linebacker out West. And uh, Hayden Lowe and Marco Jones, two edge rusher types that, you know, Marco's probably more of a linebacker. But again, really high on some of the guys. But I do think when you get to like around the 30 mark, it starts to get, you know, yeah. guys that are, are potentially undrafted, that kind of caliber of talent. So that's that's not normal for the state of California. Usually you can go about 100 deep and you're going to think those guys have a chance to go to the league and be drafted early. So I definitely think you're, you're on the right track where um, I think there's a little less talent. But I mean, let's be honest, it's, it's March 1st, long way to go. Guys are going to emerge. Um, and uh, I think these r- rankings are going to tra- change drastically over the next couple of months. One of those players in California that is one of the better players locally in the state and also nationally is Jaden Hudson out of Pittsburgh, California, um, a, an area and a school that Oregon is very familiar with, whether it's Dan Lanning recruiting or one of the many other head coaches in the last 20 years. That's a school that always produces players. Um, Oregon has always recruited that st- that school as well. Uh, another guy that you're really high on, um, I'm also high on Oregon's chances here with Jaden Hudson, but a, a dynamic safety. What's just the latest here that you're hearing? Uh, you and I talked, uh, like, texted like a week or two ago about a possible crystal ball. Um, what 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 are we hearing here? Yeah, still like Oregon. Um, another guy that showed up to the Nike's Next Ones event in Vegas around the Super Bowl. Um, really, my first time to really connect with him, talk to him in a more you know private setting, um, just kind of uh, catch up with him, get to know him a little bit. And and I asked him, you know, kind of the tough questions like, if you had to make a decision today, where would you go? And um, you know, not necessarily who's your leader, but who's doing the best job right now. I don't want to put him on the spot, but again, all signs point towards Oregon getting it done. I do think. Ohio State is a threat. Um, he was talking about how everybody considers them like wide receiver you, but he's like, you could make an argument, especially with the guys that are, they've landed this cycle, especially. And then in the past, um, Ohio State, he kind of looks at them as DBU and, or at least they're charging up that, that leaderboard. But Ohio State's probably the biggest threat. Uh, but, but again, for him, it was all about Dan Lanning. It was the stability at the top. The fact that, you know, he's, he made it clear, like Dan Lanning had an opportunity to go to Bama in just about any school we wanted to this off season. Um, and he chose to stay at Oregon and, and that was big for him. And a lot of these guys, and, and Matt, we've talked about this, like everybody that I'm talking to, that's an Oregon target. They all go back to that, how big this off season was for them and how Dan Lanning staying, it meant so much to them. And it shows how much he cares about that program. So yeah, I haven't heard anything to think that Oregon's not going to eventually be able to get this done and um, long athletic rangy talent in the back end of the defense, man. I'm still surprised a little bit that USC is not really going all in and maybe they are, and I'm just not getting that vibe. Yeah. So they're kind of a, a dark horse. We'll see how it goes later, but with the way Oregon plays and, and how they're recruiting him, I like Hudson to Oregon. I love that kid's tape too. Um, I think you have to go like a minute and 20 seconds in before a play that doesn't end with an interception. <laughs> it's like, it's really, it's, it's, it stands out. Yeah. 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 Um, so you're, out, you're out, being that you're out in Indiana, I'm curious what you're hearing from kind of Midwest recruits on Oregon's move to the Big Ten. Is it is it helping? Are you getting a sense maybe that Oregon's casting a, a wider net in the Midwest just because they're moving there? Um, I, I guess I'm just curious. Any any thoughts on Oregon's move to the Big Ten? How it's impacting recruiting right now? Yeah, I think they're doing a good job. I mean, obviously, you know, I was kind of you know recently looking at the offer list for Oregon. There's not a ton ton of love for the Midwest right now, and I'm sure that'll eventually change, but. Honestly, it may not. I mean, they have their their hot, you know, their hot beds and their areas that they really want to focus on, and the guys that they the, the areas that they have great relationships with. But um, they're doing a pretty good job right now. I know Bo Jackson, the top two four seven running back, uh, is looking at Oregon, and he wants to set a visit there. And Ohio State, Georgia, Tennessee are a few he- heavy hitters. He's one of the top most talented players in the state of Ohio. Um, so for him to be looking at Oregon, it's obviously a good sign. Um, another guy that was, you know, when I was covering Notre Dame, Sean Terry 
another Ohio uh, state of Ohio receiver just committed to Notre Dame and Ohio, uh, Oregon offered like just a couple of weeks before he committed to Notre Dame. Um, this kid has verified four or five speed in the 40. Um, Oregon's still recruiting him, still pushing for him. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure if they're getting much traction, but he seems pretty locked in and he obviously made the decision after he got the Oregon offer. So that's pretty telling. But either way, they're, they're making a run at him. Um, Darren Stray is an offensive lineman that I'm going to keep an eye on uh, as it pertains to Oregon. He's a kid out of Michigan. He's got a wide open offer list, and he's wide open in his process. But he's a big, big boy, 6'7", 300 pounds, athletic, moves well. Um, he's a guy that actually has a lot of interest in Oregon. And if they if they decide to push, you know, keep an eye on him. But the one heavy hitter that I think Oregon can land out of Big Ten country, the Midwest, is uh, Ohio top 150 edge rusher Justin Hill. Oregon's a big, big contender there. At this point, if there was if it was signing day and he had two hats on the table, I would assume that it's going to be Oregon and Ohio State. Um, I'd be shocked if he didn't take an official visit to Oregon, get on campus, really see what Dan Lanning has to offer. And um, yeah, they're they're a real threat for one of the more talented edge rushers in the country. Sorry, I got caught on mute. Um... I don't know if the, the Kansas Kansas is not the Midwest, but it's close. You do have a crystal ball in um, for Desan Brame, a tight end from Derby High School in, in Kansas. Um, another top one hundred and fifty player, a top five player at, at his position. Um, Oregon is it's it's interesting. They've got two scholarship tight ends that are seniors this season. Uh, and Ferguson and Patrick Herbert, and it's very clear that they are, pri- you know, they are going after multiple guys. And it wouldn't surprise me if if they try and sign two tight ends. Maybe depending on who it is, it, it could grow to three. Um, you have a crystal ball in here for for, for Brain. What's the latest here? Why, why did you put that in? Yeah, so I was at Battle Miami, and I uh, spoke. I spoke to a source, good friend of mine. Um, that works for with uh, California Power. And then I talked to somebody else that's pretty connected with West Coast Recruiting. And they made it very clear, like Oregon is the clear favorite right now. Yeah. Go ahead and, you know, if you want a crystal ball, go ahead and toss it in. And kind of once I got, con- you know, c- confirmation with both sources, I felt confident in doing it. And then I caught up with Brame this week and I asked him about spring visits, what his plans are, and Oregon was nowhere to be found. And he said that he's visiting Alabama, Tennessee, LSU, and Ole Miss in the com- coming weeks between March and April. So and I was like, um, That's "Where's weird. Oregon? Like, what's going on?" He's like, <laughs> "He's like, no." He kind of like laughed about it, and he was like, "No, like I, I was just there in January. I'm just gonna wait until June, and that's when I'm gonna take my official visit." So, again, all all good there with Oregon. If he doesn't make it to campus this spring, he's clearly gonna take an official in June. Um, I haven't heard anything to think that Oregon doesn't still lead. I think it's a case where. Oregon's the leader coming out of that visit in January, he visits other schools to make sure that's where he wants to be. And then I think he commits to Oregon after, after his official visit. So again, all things kind of point toward the Ducks getting it done. Another prospect I know you have a crystal ball in for is Nasir Wyatt, who I spoke glowingly about Hudson's tape a moment ago. My gosh. Like, <laughs> and I, I understand why it, like if, if he was like 260 pounds, I imagine his ranking would be, quite different. He's just really undersized. Um, what do you like about him as a prospect and, and kind of where are things right now um, with him? Great kid. Uh, once again, he, he's another one that showed up to Nike's The Next One's event in Vegas. Um, so I got to really meet him, get to know him better. Really enjoyed my time talking to him. He's not the biggest kid, like you mentioned. I mean, um, not like there's just guys that like, I mean, you've, you know, you've seen me in person. I'm not the biggest guy in the world. So <laughs> when I get around these guys, there's ones that talk like Derek Meadows, for example. I mean, he is my neck hurts when I'm talking to the guy. Um, Nasir Wyatt, I didn't get those vibes. Like I was, I was very comfortable talking to him. So, um, but as a prospect, he's he's nasty. I mean, he's he's nasty off the edge. Um, he's a guy that can draw and play linebacker. But I really like him just kind of rushing the passer. Um, kind of gives me like you know to relate to Notre Dame a little bit, like Jordan Batello vibes. A guy yeah. that's just pin your ears back and just just go get the quarterback. Just go, just do that. Don't worry about anything else. You know, see the ball, go get it. Um, so really like him, love the nasty streak about him, really good football player, obviously comes from a great program. Um, but he loves Oregon, man. I mean, he lit up. I I mean, I, I don't, I'm not trying to like throw out like silent commit vibes, anything like that, but he came across like he was practically already on the team. I mean, he spoke (laughs) willingly of Oregon, of Dan Lanning, 
There's no school recruiting him harder. There's no school doing a better job of recruiting him. Um, once again, I said it with um, with Hudson earlier. Um, I'm not sure there's any bigger fan than Dan Lanning when it comes to you know Nasir Wyatt. Um, staff stability is a big deal for him, and um, he really, really respects Lanning for his decision and uh, to stay at Oregon. So there's other schools involved, and and um, you know I can list a long list of schools that are going to push for him and go after him, but. I just really don't think anybody can catch Oregon. And my best guess would be he's committed to Oregon by the end of the spring. Wow. <clears throat> that would be really big for Oregon. Um, and that's, it's hard to defeat that, um, dispute that. Another tight end that, that I, I just talked about, that's a position of need. Um, Nate Roberts from Oklahoma. It seems like we'll call it the Plains. They have a lot of tight ends uh, this cycle. There's a lot of guys in that area. Oregon's not necessarily a leader here. Ohio State feels like that's the the number one right now. You've got a crystal ball for Ohio State, so does T. Wilt Fong and a couple other people. But Oregon still is in the picture. What's just the latest here with Nate Roberts, another tight end that Oregon would absolutely love to have if, if they can make up the ground? Yeah, Nate, Nate is a kid that I've known for a long time. He was once committed to Notre Dame and I took a lot of flack from Oklahoma fans when I predicted him to Notre Dame. And obviously we saw how that played out. He eventually picked the fighting Irish backed off on that decision. And then Oklahoma fans were shredding me for it, which I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't wrong. Um, decommits. And then shortly after that, I actually put in a crystal ball for Ohio state and I just got shredded for that as well. Um, I have a love hate relationship with Oklahoma fans. So I really should probably bring some good news to the Sooners. But um, at this point, I really do think Ohio state's the team to beat. Um, I haven't got a vibe that anybody else is really overtaking them as his leader at this point. I will say that a lot of people are talking about Oklahoma versus um, Ohio State. And for me, I think it's actually Oregon versus Ohio State. Um, marringer has got a great rela relationship with Nate Roberts, got him on campus already. Um, they connected really well. Um, but like, like I said, with Cooper Perry in Oregon, how I'd be shocked if Oregon didn't land him. Honestly, at this point, I'd be shocked if Ohio State didn't get this one done. But he's going to take an official visit to Oregon. I still think they're the number two. He's going to, and he may have already done it by the time this gets released publicly, but he's got a top five coming out. Um, you know, Oregon will be in there. He's going to take an official visit to Oregon, um, wants to shut things down before the end of his, before the end of the summer, make a decision and be completely done before the start of a senior season. So um, in my opinion, I think those are the top two teams right now. But again, I, I like the Buckeyes right now. I'm going to ask you kind of for your assessments on some of Oregon's current commitments. A couple of receivers here, Dallas Wilson, Adrian Wilson. And then I I'm really curious to hear where you are with Akili Smith Jr. I've, I've talked to a couple of different people kind of on the scouting side that have pretty varying opinions. I I'm curious to see kind of where, where your head's at. But just thoughts on, on those three, which are all four-star recruits right now. Yeah. So Dallas Wilson is a guy, big fan of him. I really like him. I like the size, I like the speed combination, top 100 kid. Um, you know, I saw him at Battle Miami. Man, the more I think about that, that event was so loaded. Um, Florida State, Auburn, Miami, all trying to flip him. Um, when I watched him Battle Miami, made a lot of plays. He was actually open a lot more than um, than he kind of gets credit for, at least in the stat stat books. Um, he, I found himself like kind of like in the end zone or on the sideline, wide open, didn't get the ball. But overall, really smooth route runner, um, effortless ball catcher. Um, no, like I said, no issues getting open, but really like that one. That's a nice get for Oregon. Um, Adrian Wilson is a guy that I first saw at the, un, or, I'm sorry, the All-American Bowl underclassmen combine in San Antonio. Interviewed him on the day before the event. Great kid. But I kind of got a vibe that I'm, that, he's not completely shut down with this process. I know he's been pretty torn throughout his entire recruitment. Um, there was chatter of early silent commitments elsewhere. And then obviously eventually picks Oregon, but keeping it on Texas A&M and Penn state, but on the field, like he, he showed everything that day at the underclassmen combine that, that makes him a top two, four, seven kid in 2025 freaky athletic uh, makes, makes some incredible catches, let a couple easy ones drop, but, He's a big play threat every every you know time he's on the field, but really no concerns about him as a player. I mean, he really is freaky. But again, I think he's a guy that Oregon needs to stay on top of throughout the entire entire process. Um, Akili Smith is a guy that initially I wasn't all that high on. I, I liked others more, but the more I watch him as, as and kind of get familiar with his game, obviously the great great bloodlines are there. He's been yep. very productive, but. 
there's a lot to like. I mean, he's got plenty of arm strength and velocity. What I really am impressed with is that he never looks rattled on the field, kind of has that cool, calm, collected look about him, which is the most difficult you know, part of evaluating quarterbacks because you never know what they're going to look like or how they're going to react when the bullets are flying around him and the lights are on on Friday night or Saturday in college. So, but tight, compact motion, athletic enough to get you a couple first downs a game, which is really what coaches want. Um, so again, I think these are three really, really good gets for Oregon. Um, I, honestly, I, I just that they're with Dallas Wilson. You got a bunch of heavy hitters coming after him. He's from Florida, and then obviously Adrian Wilson. You got a bunch of guys coming after him as well. So just stay on him, keep recruiting him like you did from day one. Treat him like they're uncommitted, and, and uh, things should work out for Oregon. I, I always get just super leery of guys that commit like 15 months or beyond for when they sign, especially when like Adrian Wilson, when they're so far away from Oregon and it's, it's incredibly hard to just either hop on a, a one forty nine Southwest flight to Eugene or to, to drive, you know, the, the five hours to get to Eugene for an official visit. Those, those commits are always super hard to get and, and to keep. So, like, I don't, I'm not saying like they're going to decommit, but like, it just wouldn't surprise me. And I completely like, agree with you for whatever it's worth. Like, those, those ones are always leery. Like, they come out of nowhere. They always report the offers. They're constantly like social media. They come across like they're not even committed. Uh, it just, you get leery about those. But in the end, it's weird that like most of those end up sticking. And we just keep talking for months about how decommit watch, decommit watch, and then all of a sudden they're on campus. So, it's weird, but yeah, just just stay on top of those guys. It should work out. Uh, I'm gonna pull an audible real quick uh, yeah. for a new question that I didn't really prepare much. But you're, you're across the country. Uh, you're in the Midwest, but you've flown all over. You've been to Florida. You've been to Vegas. Um, I'm just curious of just from an outsider's perspective of no real regional ties to Oregon. Um, from your perspective, why is Oregon such a popular school? Is it is it Dan Lanning, is it just the now 25-ish years of winning nine or more games a year? Just kind of from your perspective, hearing from recruits, what what do you feel like is a, a driver here? Because it, it feels like it's going up another level from where it was four or five years ago. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure what it is, but everybody I talk to seems to have Oregon in their top group or they're interested or, hey, what offer do you do you not have that you want? Oh, I want an Oregon offer. Well, whatever it's doing, whatever they're doing in Eugene, it's working. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with Dan Lanning. I mean, I don't I don't know Lanning personally. I don't have a relationship with him. I know a lot of coaches, but he's just not one that I've ever needed to connect with, get to know, met him somewhere. Um but there, from a, from an outside perspective, I have a great deal of respect for that guy. Uh, he comes across very natural, very genuine, very real. I don't think there's a folk, fake bone in his body, and I think that's that's what sells when it comes to recruiting. These guys want to play for people that they trust, that they like, that they want to be around, and that goes from the top down when you're talking about the parents and the kids. So, I think it's the natural, comfortable, genuine recruiting approach. And, and I, I like the staff around him. I think that that kind of, again, from the top down inside that building, they're all doing a really good job, man. And they, they treat guys like they're uncommitted. They're always all over him. You don't really hear, um, unless it's intentional, about, man, Oregon dropped the ball on this kid. That's why he's looking around. You just don't get that. And um, I just think that's why Oregon is doing a great job. Um, the results on the field obviously help. Um, but I see a lot of similarities between Oregon and Notre Dame. Like Marcus Freeman, everything I just said about Lanning, I could say as a guy who knows Marcus Freeman really well, like that, that's exactly what sells with recruiting. So I think the compare comparisons are there. Um, and I think that's why Oregon is recruiting at such a, such a elite level right now. And I think it's, they're really just scratching the surface. I think they're going to get a lot of kids that most people are a little surprised that they eventually get. Um, they're doing a great job, man. If landing stays there, there, there's no, no telling how many national championships they can win over the next 10 years, um, they're really scratching the service out how good they can be. And from a recruiting perspective, I think it's really interesting as somebody who's followed this for a long time from an Oregon perspective of just the steps up the rung of the ladder they've taken from when Chip was here. And, and it was basically the on-field results for driving recruiting to 
Mark Kelfrich was kind of the same thing. And then Willie Taggart brought a really different approach and kind of elevated them. For a moment, I think they had the number one ranked for class before he took off. Obviously, Mario took it up a level, and it seems like Dan has even elevated it further. So um, I think there's reason to be really optimistic about 25, 26, and beyond. But I did want to ask one question about 2026 20, before we get out of here. We kind of kind of mentioned Achilles Smith Jr. I think Oregon, I would imagine, is done at 25 at quarterback with him. He's locked in. I would be stunned if he doesn't end up on, on Oregon's campus next year. Who are some players at, in 26 at quarterback that Oregon maybe is worth noting for? Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on Brady Smigel at a Newberry Park, California, top 50 guy for us. Um, Oregon, Notre Dame, Florida State, Ohio State, and others are in play. I, I think Oregon, when I talked to him after his Notre Dame visit, and he quickly talked about how he wanted to get to Oregon and um, talked to a source this morning, actually, that said that Oregon is a real, real threat for him. So so keep an eye on that one. I mean, I, I think that his recruitment is kind of a unique one. We're not really sure where it's going to end up, and yeah. I'm not sure – how many schools are pushing for him this early to get a 2026 commitment out of the way, but he's definitely one that I'm, I'm keeping an eye on. Um, the other one I would probably say is Ryder Lyons out of Folsom in California, elite, elite talent. I'm um, going to take a mission trip. At least that's, you know, 95% the plan um, at this point, like his brother, but Oregon is absolutely a threat in that one. Um, I mean, tremendous talent. I mean, if you can, if you're Oregon, you can land one of those guys. Um, that's a big win for him, but Another kid that I was I was told about this morning as kind of a, if Oregon misses on a couple guys, this is a guy to keep an eye on, is Michael Mitchell out of San Francisco, six foot, 175 pounds, threw for 3,000 yards and 34 touchdowns as a sophomore. Got some nice offers from Arizona State, Arkansas, Cal, and a few others. But uh, recently visited Oregon, had a great trip, and talking to the staff for a while. Um, if Oregon, like I said, if Oregon misses on a couple guys, he's one that could be next in line to land an offer. I don't think he would really set the world on fire nationally with the perspective of, of like what a Brady would or Ryder, but um, he's one to watch. And then lastly, we're kind of sticking to more West coast quarterbacks, but one guy that's soon to be in my backyard is Jared Curtis, number one player in 2026, Ohio state and Georgia, in my opinion, are probably the two teams to watch right now, but Oregon is absolutely a threat. Spoke to somebody that said he'll, he'll return to Oregon wants to get out to Eugene again. Um, depending on how long he takes his process out. But Oregon uh, really impressed him. He likes Dan Lanning a lot. So, you know, we'll see if uh, he sets up another visit this offseason uh, or even in the fall to Oregon if he remains uncommitted. But, yeah, Oregon is, is a definite threat there for uh, the kid out of Nashville. He is Tom Loy. You can follow him on Twitter at TomLoy247. And he's going to be on this podcast frequently. He's, you can read his work on 24-7 Sports and also at Duck Territory often. Tom, thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate it for the insight and uh, look forward to having you on more often here on the show. Looking forward to it, guys. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tom.